this is Shay from Illinois, and you are listening to Lo-Fi Poli Sci. <laughs> From Illinois, bringing us into the show today. Thank you, Shay. And everyone, come check us out live in person tomorrow, September 29th, Thursday. Yes, tomorrow, Thursday, at UNO Sandbar from 6 to 7 p.m. for Lo Fi Policy Live. Or another title we going with a Lo Fi Policy production. Mun undone. Yes, come and see the we that we be. Now to the news, fresh off that press, that North Africa edition of your lo-fi global people. Out in Libya, off and on fighting continues between the United Nations-backed transitional government and an opposition-backed government and military-slash-paramilitary factions that uh, all of them, all of those are vying for power and control of the country. And look, Libya overthrew their authoritarian dictator Gaddafi back in 2011, you know, as a byproduct of the Arab Spring. And 11 years later, with the United Nations-backed government in the country, Libya is still, for all intents and purposes, a failed state. Like, we have to wonder... You know, the world is like screaming about this and screaming about Russia and Ukraine. And yet for 11 years, Libya has been upside down and little to no one seems to care. Oh, and, and to bring us to yesterday's episode, the last year we had data on the number of Internet users in Libya was in 2014. And back then, only 18 percent of the population were internet users. Just food for thought. But now let's let's check out Egypt, you know? They seem stable and all good and well and right, right? Question mark, question mark? I mean, if you consider being one of the countries that arrest more journalists than any other country in the entire world, then, then sure, Egypt's just fine and dandy. I mean, in 2022, Reporters Without Borders, that ranks countries and territories by media freedoms, ranked Egypt 168 out of 180. So yeah, you tell me how things are going out over there. You know, after overthrowing a longtime dictator and then overthrowing a democratically elected president and then installing a military junta later on and then that leader becoming the president and staging two elections. And sure, Egypt's doing well since the Arab Spring. Well, 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 what about what about Tunisia? You know, the birthplace of the Arab Spring, the shining star of democracy in the region, the hope of a better tomorrow brought to you by the people today. Well, their president took over last year and suspended the parliament and suspended the courts and threw out the constitution and rewrote a new one that no one liked, but put it up for an election and a referendum anyway. And only 30 percent of the population showed up to that constitutional referendum because everyone was boycotting his authoritarian rule. But he caused the election and was a victory for victory quotation marks for his constitution, and he continues to control the country today. Damn. Well, hey, let's you know what? Forget it, forget it. Let's check out Morocco then. You know, you know where the city of Casablanca is, right? You know, you know. Here's looking at you, kid. Or, or out of all the gin joints in all the world, she had to walk into this one. Or, or how about this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Unless, unless, of course, you have no idea what I mean. And then anyway, Morocco, the country that almost touches the tip of Spain, neighbors with Algeria, and southern neighbor too, or colonial controller of Western Sahara? Question mark? You know how I always say Africa has between 54 to 56 countries? Yeah, well, Morocco and Western Sahara are one of the reasons why I say that. You see, Morocco claims it. Western Sahara says, no, we're our own country, people. And they have fought since 1975 about this. You know, things cooled off in the 1990s, but, you know, recently, Spain goes in and stirs the pot because, of course, Europe has to mess with Africa. But they said Morocco has every right to control Western Sahara. And Western Sahara was, of course, pissed off by this. And you see, Morocco itself, looking at Freedom House rankings of a country from 0 to 100, 0 being completely not free, 100 being completely democratic, Morocco gets a 37 out of 100 partly free. But Western Sahara gets a 4 
out of 100, not free rating, because of all the oppression that Morocco puts on it. And it makes you think, you know, who deserves to be a free country? And who doesn't? And who gets to decide? I mean, it's not like anyone else anywhere on the planet is thinking about this or fighting about this right now, huh? You know, Morocco and West of Sahara, they've only been fighting over this for past 47 years. Just some thoughts. And a last piece of news to send you on your way for the day. To Sudan we go. And you know, Sudan is under a military junta at the moment, a military dictatorship that promises the return to democracy one day. But a thread of shining light and hope has arisen. And that is that the current military general who performed the military coup and is leading the country right now has just said that he will not run for president of the country once they transition back to democracy. Which, hey, if you didn't know, that's kind of par for the course for generals. That, you know, they do a military coup, then they transition to democracy, they run for president or prime minister, and what you know, they get it, i.e. Thailand, i.e. Egypt. But in Sudan, they say, we will choose a different path. All right, Sudan, all right, I see you. Now let's see those elections. And that's a brief snapshot of what's going on in North Africa today. And hey, it's not a cliche or a catchphrase. It's a lifestyle. Always remember that Le Pop is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Pickering, signing off.